Welcome to the Heron Heads. My name is Julio, and I'm joined today by some friends and fellow Inter Miami fans, Jose, Dave, and Chris. And on behalf of the guys, we want to thank you for joining us for episode three here on the Heron Heads podcast, your first stop for all things Inter Miami. For those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for stopping by, and make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy the show. On today's episode of the Heron Heads, we will be taking a look ahead towards the League's Cup semifinals between Inter Miami and Philadelphia Union. So taking a look at this matchup, Dave, what are your keys to the game? I just have two quick points. Uh, the first one is uh, it's more for Philadelphia it's, and to see where we stand against them. It's their health. Um, going into this game, they had a few injuries, uh, the main one being former Inter-Miami player uh, Julian Carranza. He went down um, last match versus Querétaro, and uh, he's their leading goal scorer, so his health is a major is of major import to this game and uh then just from a strategic standpoint i think the the most important part for for inner is to keep the ball and they're attacking third um we know that our defense isn't the best so if and this is again the best the best team that we faced to this point so as long as we keep the ball into and the attacking third there's less chance of an issue also this is a hyper aggressive defense they're known to foul and you know if we're in, if we're deeper into the goal area, and we and we get a foul, then that's when Messi starts to to do his most damage from those free kicks. So that's my biggest uh, point of emphasis for this game. So thank you for taking my key to point to the game, David. But <laughs> I have to agree with the with the the fouls. Um, seems like they they do have a very aggressive defense. They're one of the top five. Um, teams as far as fouls uh, go in the MLS so I think um the last few um the last few games Miami's been very good at at kind of getting these fouls and drawing these fouls uh, from the other team so I think we could use that to our advantage um and like you said uh, anywhere right around the box if if Messi could have a chance to kick make a kick from there um I think it it bodes well for for Miami um another key that I want to point out is um, I think we got to really get our, our wingers in involved and make these these crosses either through the ground, through the air, but we got to get those crosses into the center of the box and, and give our attackers a, a chance to, to score because um, it seems like their defense, although very good, it allows, um, it allows a lot of opportunity coming from, from the outside in. Yeah, uh, to, to bounce off of what you guys were just saying, uh, we definitely need to he have our possession over 60% uh, to have control of this game, obviously. Uh, we've done that all, all, all cup long. Uh, we hover around, I think, uh, Julio, we were talking earlier, is 59.6. That's where we average right now. Um, I, I, I would like it to be a little higher since it is a better team that we face so far. This is the better one. Um, I, I, we need Messi to be Messi in this game. Um, we need to prevent any counters. The, this team is is looking to draw turnovers on us and and, and get, get out and run. Uh, the like Chris said, actually, uh, the the backs are going to be very very big for us. Whether it's on offense, trying to uh, put it in play, get an assist, like Yellen did last game. Uh, Alba's done time and time and again. But 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 specifically, if we get a turnover, we need them to get back and and defend. So that, th those are my key for Miami to, to win the game. Yeah, I think all of those are valid points and echoing what pretty much everyone has talked about. Possession will be absolute key. Uh, the I, I don't know if we're going to be able to hold over 60% possession like we did against Charlotte, but if we're able to hold more possession than them and particularly have more threatening possession – have possession not just passing around the back in our defensive zone or towards the middle of the field, but if we're actually putting pressure on them and trying to pull them out of position, they're, like you guys said, the best team that we're going to have faced so far with Messi and the new guys. So being able to stress the defense like we've talked about time and time again and try to force them to make mistakes, that's our that's our best formula for success right now. And when we turn the ball over, avoiding quick breaks, Philadelphia is not so heavily reliant on counters because they tend to have the ball more than their opposition, but that's our weakest point. So we need to be very tidy when we do turn the ball over, 
like you were saying, Jose, have the wingbacks fly back, cover. Um, they have some speed in attack, so making sure they don't get around us will be really important, making sure Kamal and Kristoff are able to keep the plays in front of them and being aware when we turn the ball over not to allow these attackers to get in uh, good positions. But possession will be the most important because that's our game. We're, we're good on attack when we hold the ball and just start pulling the defense out of position and we can find our spots and make creative runs and have Messi sort of pop in and out of the play. So, Oh, I was going to say another, not so much a key, but a, a buildup from the last few games, I think, is the, the connection that they're making up front. Um, like we spoke about last episode, the 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 great uh, sequences that, they, that we have in the box uh, as far as passing goes. Um, I think if we could build on that, that's going to be huge um, for our attack and to get those goals scored. Totally agree. I I would imagine that every game that goes by, there will be more interplay, more understanding of where everyone's going to be on the field. There's so many new pieces to this puzzle that have come in that it's not quite a finished product yet. We're not polished playing as a unit, but you can see every game a couple little flashes of Oh, they're starting to get it. They're starting to understand where each other mm -hmm. is, where to expect each other to run into. And with that will come much more dynamic play as we're on attack and on defense because they'll understand who's got my back, who's the, like the fail safe. If I miss a tackle or turn the ball over, who's got my back? They'll begin understanding that more and more as time goes on, as they get more game time together. So I do think that's huge. And that is certainly something that I'm looking forward to seeing because that's part of the joy of having these great players is the our, our players that we've had before have this new incredible level of player coming in that make ele elevates the, the talent around them. We got whooped the last time we played them straight up. We got whooped. So just, just the addition of these new guys, what was it, five to one the last time we played them? That's what we're doing to these yeah. people now. <laughs> That's what we're doing to everyone we play now. It's but, been uh, the common theme every episode. This right. isn't the same team as it was before. <laughs> we threw 100%. out that data already. So. 100%. So as we look at Philadelphia, um, what what are we most afraid of? <laughs> I don't know if we're afraid of anything particular. I mean, we, like, like we've said, like, we literally have an amazing player, the best player. Every time we get on the pitch, we have the best player out there so with that they're the ones that are scared we're, we're not scared right um but having said that this is uh 11 on 11 right it's not it's not one on 11 so uh one thing that i've that keeps going about in twitter is that they've sold out their stadium in in eight minutes uh we don't know if it's if it's true or not david said that some some union guys are saying that no nah, it's not real it's not true i don't believe that but what's out there is that they sold 18,500 tickets in eight minutes. So they're very excited about this game. Uh, their union coach, Jim Curtin, actually is begging their fans to not sell the tickets. And I quote, please don't sell your tickets no matter how much money they're offering for them, please. Yeah, I it's, saw that. <laughs> say no, you know, say no to he's money. Begging. He's begging. <laughs> he's begging. What if I told you that Messi bought all those tickets? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Curveball. <laughs> Uh, the Union also have, the, like we've said in the past, like we've already said, they're the best defense that, that we faced. Um, but they're they're extremely disciplined. They're an extremely disciplined team, and and they, you know, that they they're not going to just let us uh, run through them. You know? I expect them to muck it up in the middle to to try and get Messi off his game, get Sergio off his game. Uh, the messier, the, you know, the messier it is for Messi, uh, the the harder it is going to be for us. Uh, they're hoping to get turnovers, uh, to get counters on us. It's our weakness. 65% of goals scored on the union have been this way in open play, you know? So, so one of the things that we need to do is we need to just say, okay, well, we're not going to turn the ball over. We're going to keep the ball in, in their territory and, and we're going to score. Yeah. That, that idea of mucking up the middle, that's something that I feel like we emphasize that on every team that's going to play us. So they're trying to muck up the middle and avoid messy, but, he finds a way. I mean, that's that's the beauty of, of Messi. Everybody kind of pokes fun at him for just walking around, but we he do. kind of lulls them to sleep. He walks around, and then the defense starts looking at the ball, and then before they know it, Messi's made a run, and they're still flat-footed looking at the ball. So mm -hmm. that whole muck up the, the middle thing, yeah, they need to try to do that, but so has everybody else. And so far, everyone is 
failed yeah, to failed miserably. Um, my fear, I mean, I know, like Jose said, we don't have any real fear going into these games anymore with with the world class Messi on our on our on our team. But my fear is we've had the ball uh, the majority of these games. And like I said in my in my my preview, is we want to have the ball in the attacking third. Uh, now, if I've noticed that we like to kind of kick the ball around on the defensive side, kind of waiting and chipping away to see if there's a crack, this team being as aggressive as they are can capitalize on that. And outside of Jordi Alba, I don't know how confident I am in the passing of Kamal Miller or Kristoff or or Yedlin for that matter. So I'm very I'll be very nervous. For a, for a mistake or a turnover on our defensive side when we're trying to maintain possession. So that's why I stress we need to get the ball outside of our defensive possession and see how, how that works. But that's the one thing I'm looking for where, where I think Philly can hurt us. I'm not sure how good Charlotte is rated when they press, but we, we played out of their press pretty well. Kamal seems more comfortable on the ball with every game that passes. And I actually counted three very good Kristoff passes where he played them not just, you know, to the side horizontally kind of across the pitch, but rather made very good intent, like very positive passes up the field. I, yeah, this will be a different animal. Their, their Philadelphia's press, I imagine is much stronger and they play a three, five, two typically. So there will be a lot of numbers in the defense's face at all times. And it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how well they're able to withstand that. Oh, a fear might actually going putting the magnifying glass back on our defense. Um, if you go back to the last few games in the League's Cup, they've been um, they've been getting on goal shots from right outside the box. I'm curious to see if our center backs could keep up with that and maybe press on their, their attackers a little bit to not give them that much free space to, to get these shots off because um, there have been some heaters. <laughs> That's going to be there. a big task for Busquets so, and Arroyo too, to drop back yeah. and provide support to keep right. those in front of them because right. a lot which of those are, are coming from the midfield attackers. They're, they're right. Which Arroyo did a decent job last last match, so hopefully he could keep that up as well today or Tuesday. <laughs> I notice a lot of their a lot of their plays that are extremely dangerous. They come from crosses coming from the outside, inside, whether it's on, on via the air or on the ground. Um, they they're also extremely good, like Chris said, at long shots. And and like Hulu said, it was the top of the key. A lot of them. Yeah, I mean, you don't get seven shots on target per game unless you mix in some long distance heaters. I think that um. That, that's something to be really weary of, is allowing shots. Calendar has been great all season long. I, I'm not entirely convinced he'll be beat with any regularity with long shots, but if someone hits a good shot, sometimes the offense is better than good defense or good goalkeeping. Uh, they have some stats that really jumped off the page to me on top of getting seven shots on target per game, which seems pretty high. They only have to make 1.4 saves per game, which is incredible. Yeah. And they've only allowed 0.8 goals per game. So not only have they allowed less than a goal per game, they've only really allowed two shots on target per game. Right? They're allowing about a goal per game and they're saving the other shot on target, which is insane. We average 5.8 shots on target. So we need to make sure those are really putting Andre Blake, putting him to work. He's a great keeper, but everyone can be beat. Are these are these stats just for this tournament, or are they MLS stats included? Just for the tournament. There's a little bit more normalcy with the goals allowed per game when you look at season stats for the MLS. Right now, they're defending at a very high level, and these numbers might be skewed somewhat by the fact that they've played three Mexican um, league teams which are not particularly particularly the best Mexican league teams. They played Tijuana, who were down players because of red cards, and they played Querétaro twice, the first of which was a drubbing, 5-1, to one, I believe. 
Yeah, they also have they also have some good players though uh, on defense. Like even if those even if those uh those numbers are skewed, they, they still have Jacob Lesness. He's he he made the offer the last two years. MLS Defender of the Year last year. I mean, I'm 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 you know these guys are no scrubs. Yeah, like like we said in our last episode, this is by far. I don't think anyone's arguing this is going to be the best opposition we faced since this version of the team has been together. But with that, plays devil's advocate, we're probably the best opposition that they faced, or we are for sure the best opposition they faced all tournament. So it's going to be a test both ways. Um, I think it's going to be a bloodbath, but it's 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 going to be interesting to see how it comes out. Yeah, both Querétaro and Tijuana, we checked last where they because the, their league kind of just started this year, but last season they finished towards the bottom of the table. So we're going off of that. They're not only did they go against weak Mexican league teams, they went against possibly the worst Mexican league teams. And guess what? They, they played all their games at home. All of the games have been at home. None of them have been away. We've already had to play an away game. Uh, Dallas, Dallas is probably better than any of the teams they played. To that that's point, off. That's off cuff. Just think. Just guessing. Hundred percent. To that end, Philadelphia is very good at home. <laughs> what was it? They've won twenty-seven of the last twenty-eight, or have not lost twenty-seven of the last twenty-eight at home. So it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. I would argue that. Miami and Nashville have been the best of the remaining four teams in the League's Cup. I think that we should be favorites to advance just based on the League's Cup performances. But this will, without a doubt, be our most toughest, our most toughest, our most tough, nice. our just, toughest. just our toughest. Grammar on point. <laughs> most toughest. It will be our toughest fight yet, but I'm interested to see how it plays out. Uh, what's the um what's the betting line did you have you checked any of that has that come out at all or no i'll tell you right now so right now inter miami is inter miami are favorites they're they're basically even money hmm. and philadelphia is plus 230 a draw which would mean penalties is at 280 so, so inter miami are definitely favorites they also that also might be skewed a little bit by the amount of bets that come in on inter miami so it might have opened a little bit higher than that but right now, Miami are betting favorites. I was like, I thought Craig put you, put you on the spot right there. I was like, Jesus Christ. I knew he was ready for that one. <laughs> well, he's our, he's I, our betting guy here. He's our I, betting he guy. keeps all the numbers. He keeps all the numbers stored in his beard. I actually so, come yeah. up with the the lines for Vegas from time to time. Can I see Julio's beard? Julio, your beard's kind of cut off on the YouTube. Okay, cool. Uh, healthy. Keeps a little cheat, cheat, cheat healthy. There. Yeah. Picks them out. Uh, what I like, though, is that Listen, listen to this stat. When the odds uh, are for our Inter Miami are even or at plus 100, the expected chance of winning anticipated by Vegas is 50%. But this team actually wins 77% of the matches when they have those odds. Wow. I love me some, some math and numbers. Just That's right. Feed me. We never lost <laughs> with Messi. Right. So. so as we look at this match, do you, let, let's go back to a conversation we had ahead of the Charlotte match, do we think there will be more lineup changes, some more lineup tinkering by Tata, our number one fan? <laughs> I mean, Tata, I if you're listening right now, make the change. Do it. Put Campana in there. That's a change you got to make, and I think it happens. I think he doesn't want to mess around with this higher-level talent team that we're going to play on Tuesday, and he makes a change. I don't think he does it. I think we've been winning. Why, why, why would why, why would why change something that's working? Um, what I do expect is Gomez to to, to be the starter, uh, which is funny that when we played Charlotte, I said that I want Kramaski to be the, the starter, but I just think that against this team, it would be nice to have a nice uh, more possession. I think Gomez can help out with that a little better. I think, I think uh, he, he stays he stays with Martinez to start the game, but like I said last time. I- I said I wanted him to to pull him out faster. I think he does the same thing. If Martinez looks as lost as he did last game, expect him to make the switch right out the half. I don't think he waits to to sub him off. I think he does it right at the half. With uh, and then, I think the rest of the lineup stays the same. Uh, the one thing that I'm curious is is they ha- so those two new signings that they that they just made this past week. It's um, what is it Toto Aviles, the center back. And Facundo Farias, 
the attacker. Uh, I'm curious if we if we if we look like we're we're on top and it's looking a little safe. I'd love to see them be put into the action because I think um, if we can see if the center back has any juice to him, maybe that's somebody we can incorporate going forward into the in the tournament, and maybe they have a legitimate chance to start next to Miller. Um, but we needed to get a good lead in order to to see that. So that's like the one thing I want to see uh, as as the subs start coming in and out. I want to see if some of these new signings get involved. That'd be great. The young guys. So oh. going back to your point, Jose, you said um, you're saying to start Gomez again. I don't see how that makes any sense, considering that we're playing such a great defensive team and now we want to take off a great offensive weapon from Jose, Jose from... wants over 60% possession. That's why. That's why I just got possession. <laughs> oh, I, so I, I, every time want... they get the ball, we get it back. That's it. No scoring, just possession. <laughs> just <laughs> Go to they pens score, at the end. Get the ball. Zero, zero, pens, we win. That's yeah. it. So, so I meant to get a bell in time for this episode so that I could start ringing it for Campana because. I am of the belief that this is the game that Campana gets his start. I think Kermaski also starts over Gomez, and we keep that midfield unit together. He'll bring a little bit more dynamism. We'll try to go for the early lead. Philadelphia has looked sus a, a, a couple times. They seem like they can get caught a couple times with their center back stepping up. Um, like I said earlier, they play three at the back, so maybe one or two of times one of them will get aggressive and kind of overstep and we can play quick pass behind which Campana does really well with stretching the defense Kormaski does really well with stretching the defense and Chris like you were saying earlier hopefully we'll see a couple of those inter quick quick passes in the box and it'll lead to something special so I think those changes well I think the Campana change happens finally the one that we've been hoping for and that I've been hoping for and I think Kramaski stays as a starter. And we go for the early lead. We go for the the quick start that we've been getting these past four games in the League's Cup. Let's say we score again in the first 15 minutes, first 12 minutes of the game again. And then as the game wears on, Kramaski comes off and Gomez comes on and we see the game out. And you get your 60% percent, percent uh, possession, Jose. That's right. I would love, that. I would love 65 <laughs> and, I, and I think if if uh, for lineup changes for the for the union, I know you know that that's something to look forward to. Obviously, we're we're all, we're all wondering it. Not, it hasn't come out yet, but the injuries, it has to be said. Like that's that's going to be a big deal. Carranza is particularly right. Yeah, He's, Carranza and Gazdar are both on the mend. I think Carranza's injury was a a hamstring or a groin. It was, it was leg related, but he came off, and we we haven't seen any updates. We've been checking pretty religiously all day. And I'm sure we'll get a report tomorrow as they they go into uh, some some light training ahead of the match, but there hasn't really been a lot of news to pick up on, Nothing. to to update us and kind of guide us in that sense. So, do you guys want to get into some match predictions? Sounds good. I I, I like to talk about uh, if it's possible uh, so, some X factors of the players. Impossible. <laughs> Oh, oh, who's, who's, who's your X factor? Um, well, Jose Martinez um, for for them is is interesting because uh, he's probably the only guy that's played Messi uh, before. He was in the Venezuelan uh, team that that played them um, where they lost three zero, and I think it was in twenty twenty one in Copa Copa America, I believe it was. Uh, so I mean, it's, he doesn't have very good experience, but he has experience. Um, or just he had thrashed them. Uh, Yellen and Alba, obviously, we've already talked about the backs. Uh, those those are going to be huge for us, whether it's on offense or defense. Yeah, I think the onus will be on our defenders. I'm looking at Kamal. I'm looking at Kristoff. This is going to be, I don't know, maybe Dallas was a little bit more potent with the name power that they had on attack, but this is going to be a challenge. There's There's going to be a lot of Philly Union players running at them constantly they tend to play with a lot of players on attack so i'm really i'm not worried about how they're going to handle it but i'm interested to see how the game plays out when philadelphia has the ball we haven't had to face opposition that have been able to hold the ball for long stretches and that's when we're really going to see how good tactically that that has set them up 
and how they're going to handle consistent pressure because we haven't really seen that against any of the opposition that we've faced. We've dominated the ball. So we're the ones pulling their defense out of position. I'm going with Calendar. I think Calendar is going to be um, making some some great saves. He's going to bail out our defense a little bit. Although our defense had a great game. Um, uh, what was it, Friday night? But I think this is really going to put him to the test, and I think he's going to have to make some some really nice saves. Like we spoke about earlier with, with all the shots on goal. Um, I think he's, he's going to be the one to make the difference on Tuesday. My expector is whoever's playing opposite Messi up front. If it's if it's I think Martinez, his name is, I think his name is David Lowe. David no, 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 no. I mean, I mean his his attacking buddy, whether it be oh, Martinez, you you. Okay. Martinez or or Campana. Uh, we play so differently with the two of them that it it's it's really going to dictate how how we're playing. I know we've we've all said that we want to see crosses against these guys. Campana opens up both aerial and ground crosses. Well, Martinez does not. So that's that's the X factor, seeing who starts up front and, and see what happens. Agreed, agreed. So with that, what's the final score? Are we going to get those crosses in and put up another seven goals? <laughs> David? <laughs> seven goals? No, actually, this, again, since they, since Union has such a, a ball-dominant style, I don't think that we'll have the chances for seven goals. Uh, this time, I'm going to say, I want to be bold here. So I, I, I want to say 4-1. And Messi finally gets his hat trick that he's been dying to, to get. You know he wants it. There's games that have been yes. blown up. Like, Why is Messi in there? And he's, he's, hat, he's hat hunting. So I think, I think he gets his hat trick. It's the best defensive team that we've played. I don't care. Interesting. <laughs> I don't care. All rules out the window. Throw it they've, out. Never, they've never defended against Messi. True. Facts. Martinez has. Not well, apparently. Not well, <laughs> but he has. I'm gonna go with um I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Inter actually having the possession and winning the possession game. Uh, but I'm also gonna have us causing turnovers while doing it, which is awkward, but I, I, I see us I, I see us somehow getting beat on the by the backs. And I see it being a 3-3 game, and it ended in PKs, and we went 3-3. Who hits the winning shot? I'm just, I mean, I'm hoping for Maskey to just do it again. <laughs> you know, why not? You, you think you're good? Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. And uh, I expect that, that. We love for Maskey on this, and, on this podcast, by the way. We love him, so if oh, you're absolutely. listening, if you're listening Ben Ha. Don't listen to Jose, but you're awesome. We know he, he actually listens with Tata. I'm hoping Tata listens to this. He goes to the team <laughs> and he says, I know this is our toughest opponent. This is the best defense we played, but clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. 60% possession. Minimum. That just pump that just pumped me up. Pump me up. Absolutely. But I'm not gonna change my prediction that I have in my head. So my prediction is a low scoring game, two one. Miami squeaks it out um, in the last quarter of the game. Um, I think Messi gets gets a goal. And I think we were talking about crosses earlier. I think Jordi Alba has two assists, one to Messi and the other one to Campana, who's going to play all game. Wow. <laughs> all 90 minutes. Love that. <laughs> so originally I had in mind to say 3-3 three, three to penalties. But now that Jose has said that, I'm going to switch it up. Let's and I'm just going to say, we're Reminds. not going to have to stress. And we'll just go 3-2. Nice and easy. We'll <laughs> win in regulation. We'll probably be super nervous coming down to the wire. And someone that we haven't really talked about, but Sergio Busquets, will have an absolute master class of a game, even though we're going to allow two goals. He's going to dominate the midfield. We'll get caught in a couple counters, granted. But he's going to dominate the midfield, spray it out to Alba, spray it out to Yedlin, and we're going to find Campana for a brace. And Messi, of course, with his goal, because that's just what he does. So 3-2 final. That's what it is. Eat, Death sleep, taxes. scores goals. Death taxes and Messi makes a goal. That's it. So with that, guys, we will wrap today's episode. But please do join us after the game on Tuesday night. 
as we will recap the hopefully the Inter Miami victory that's coming and we'll again bring our pots and pans and champagne bottles as always. So from the guys here, I want to thank you for listening to the Heron Heads podcast and hope you have a good one. See you guys later. See ya.